Hi, St. Mark's. So I'm continuing my series on music of the English Reformation this week. Last week, I spoke about William Byrd, who composed music mainly for the Catholic side of the English Reformation. This week, I'm going to switch gears and talk about someone from the other side, the Protestant side, and his name is John Murbeck. John Murbeck was born in Windsor, England, sometime between 1505 and 1510. We don't know an exact date, but most scholars seem to think it's closer to 1510. Murbeck served as a singer and organist at St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle. Some of you may know this church from Prince Philip's funeral a few weeks ago. It was held there as was the wedding of Prince Harry to Meghan Markle a few years back. Following Henry VIII's split with the Church of Rome, religious life in England continued much as it had before. It was very much in the Catholic side of things. There are those in England at this time who feel that the Reformation needed to go further and needed to follow the ideals of Martin Luther and John Calvin, rather than continuing their Catholic practices. John Murbeck was one of these people, and he was closely associated with a group called the Windsor Martyrs. Murbeck, along with Robert Testwood, another singer at St. George's Windsor, Anthony Pearson, a local Protestant preacher, Robert Bennett, a lawyer and former mayor of Windsor, and Henry Filmer, a tailor, and the parish church warden were all a part of this group. The Windsor martyrs were particularly sympathetic to the teachings of Martin Luther and John Calvin, and they attempted to spread these tenets, especially tenets against pilgrimages, the veneration of relics, the selling of indulgences, devotions to the Blessed Virgin Mary, and making the Bible in the vernacular available to all. Testwood, Filmer, Pearson, Bennett, and Murbeck were arrested by the Bishop of Winchester and taken to the bishop's jail for promoting the Protestant cause. Murbeck, in particular, was arrested because during a raid on his home, it was discovered that he had written uh, documents against the six articles that Henry VIII had put in place. And he was also working on a draft of a concordance of the Bible, a thick book that recorded every instance of every word in the Bible. He had spent six years doing this, but it was confiscated and he was carted off to jail. Murbeck's official charge that led to his arrest and eventual death sentence was for uttering sacrilegious words against the Mass. Murbeck claimed that the words found in his home were written by John Calvin, and he had simply copied them rather than writing them himself, and he copied these words long before the six articles were in place. The Bishop of Salisbury believed Murbeck's story and came to his aid. He petitioned the king for a pardon, and it was granted. Robert Bennett, at this point, was older and infirm because he suffered from the plague. And his wife and close friends worked together to uh, petition the king for a pardon, which was granted to him as well. Pearson, Filmer, and Textwood were not so lucky. They were sentenced to death and were executed. After receiving his pardon, John Murbeck continued to strengthen the Protestant cause for the rest of his life. Once Henry VIII had died and Edward VI has taken over, his Calvinist ideas were allowed to flourish and to grow. So he continued working on his concordance and eventually had it published. In 1549, Murbeck was asked to complete a musical setting of the texts for the Book of Common Prayer. 1549 is the first Book of Common Prayer. So these were some of the first settings of our service in English. He created a book called the Book of Common Prayer Noted, 
which was published a year later in 1550. The musical settings in this collection adhered to the strict musical stipulations set forth by Archbishop Cranmer. This required a simpler manner of composition with, quote, for every syllable a note, end quote, rather than the multi-note melismas found in earlier works, especially those of Byrd or Talis. Murbeck's musical settings were published in 1550, but by 1552, a new edition of the Book of Common Prayer came out and made all of Murbeck's work obsolete after only two years. It's kind of like buying a computer today, I think. Murbeck's musical settings disappeared from the public eye until the mid-1800s, when the Oxford movement rediscovered these parts of their history and claimed them as their own once again. These settings eventually made their way across the Atlantic to the United States, and the hymnal 1940 and the hymnal 1982 both contain Murbeck's settings. John Murbeck also wrote the tone that we use for the great litany during the season of Lent. And today I'll play the parts of Murbeck's communion setting. These are from the hymnal 1982, but it's also, as I mentioned, found in the hymnal 1940. It's the first communion service in that book, if you'd like to look it up. These texts in the modern American form are meant to be used with right one, so we don't hear them often here at St. Mark's, but maybe some of you know them from other churches you've attended, or maybe you remember them from the hymnal 1940. I hope you enjoy listening to these beautiful old settings, these earliest settings of the Book of Common Prayer, and I'll see you all soon.
Uh oh, you're evaluating my work. I am. Are you subscribed? I will with a red button. And give us a thumbs up. I'm a fan, of course.